What's going on? We are back. It's the Diedrich Taylor Coaches Show. I'm your host, Brandon Marcus, with the head coach of Cal State Fullerton. I shall now call him Mr. 100. Diedrich Taylor, congrats, my dude. Thank you. I appreciate that. And nobody has seen the ups and downs like you have. So for us to get to that and then for us to be able to talk about it is, is, is something special, especially talking about it with you. Yeah, it wasn't pretty at the beginning. It wasn't pretty, but you uh, made your way to the NCAA tournament after winning the Big West tournament. And now you have become a perennial contender in the conference. And along it, with it comes wins. And yeah. you get to 100 wins. And it says a couple of things. First of all, that you've developed a winning program. Second of all, that you have won enough to stay at Cal State Fullerton because you can't rack up that amount of wins unless you continue to have a tenure at a program. So it says a lot about what you've done. And uh, it, it's incredible. It's, it's, I'm very proud of you. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, it, it, <clears throat> it sounds cool, you know, when you put it that way. And, it, it, and I'm, I'm very appreciative of it. But obviously, you know, I said this off the air and I'll say it on the air, like the 100 wins is a public barometer that people use to judge success. And it's important because it does solidify us in terms of um, longevity, you know, being able to be in one spot to do that. And it says a lot about Jim Donovan, who's the athletic director here. And it says a lot about the presidents that have that have come and gone. Um, and our current president, um, Fram, um, who's, who's big time. Um, but, but I get more excited about the relationships that have been built because of their, the Cal State Fullerton men's basketball program under our leadership. I get excited about the fact that 92% of the kids or the young men, I shouldn't call them kids, the young men that have come through here, 92% of them have earned their degree. I get excited about the fact that, that this program has produced 26 pros in seven years. Yeah. That's what 100 wins to me. I get excited about the fact that John Smith is now leading his own program at Cal, Cal Poly uh, San Luis Obispo and that Danny Sprinkle is leading his own program at Montana State. I get excited to be a part of that um, and their success, you know, and that really, that signifies 100 wins to me more than, you know, 100 wins. You know, what we've been through with those, those guys, Danny Sprinkle and John Smith and them, given everything they had to our program and us being able to reward them with an opportunity to lead their own program. That's what a hundred wins to me. And it's a leader. I mean, that you're a leader. That, that's, that's a definition right there, man. Uh, I mean, it's funny because you never want to take credit for anything. And I understand that. No. Listen, you're, you're a humble man. And that's one of the best characteristics about you is that you're not going to go and applaud yourself and say, you know what, because we've talked about this in previous episodes where We've judged what is success. And yeah. we talk about how, well, success is getting into coaching. Then it's getting a D1 job. Then it's getting a bigger D1 job. Well, in this area, it's getting to 10 wins, getting to 50 wins. Now it's 100 wins. Now it's what's next? What can I do? So there's always something bigger and better that you're striving towards. But you have to take time to soak in your current accomplishment. And that's what we're doing on this show of course, with many other things. We'll talk about that game against UC Irvine where you guys were able to win. We have a big mail bag. Um, and we also want to talk about something that you're doing on the side. So a jam-packed episode. But <laughs> you got to take time to just enjoy the milestones because if you don't, then where does the happiness come from, you know? No question. And, and, and I do. And I, and I will. Um, I kind of took yesterday to myself and I didn't really do a whole lot other than spend time returning texts and phone calls and things, but, you know, also appreciating, you know, from whence we've come, mm -hmm. you know, um, year three, I think it was, we started off seven and two, losing the two pack 12 schools at the time. And then all of a sudden the bottom falls out and you wonder to yourself, you know, are you going to make it? Do you, do you, do you have enough to, to find your version of success? What now is your version of success or, or definition of success? And so, you know, all those things, I appreciate um, the lessons learned. I appreciate um, the validation that, that going to the tournament gives to this program, that going to the tournament championship game for the second year in a row gives to our program and what it says about the people in our program, what it says about most importantly, um, the young men that come through our program. It, we're able to, I think, 
provide lifelong lessons for them through the sport of basketball. And no, they probably won't learn those lessons or appreciate learning those lessons right now or even over the next five years. But when they come back, um, they can always hold their degree and no one can take that away from them. They can always have their kids' kids point the rafters and say, you know what? We were a part of that team that went to the NCAA tournament. No one can ever take that away from them. And so, you know, those are some of the highlights, um, but there's a multitude of lowlights that lead to those highlights. And, and for me, I, I, I revel in the, in the process, you know, of, of getting there. Um, what comes to mind vividly is just being on the stage after the championship game that we won, going to the tournament, and they ask, what does the win mean? To me, um, you know, it, it provided our program with the level of validation. You know, it, it just validated John Smith deciding to leave his tenured job as a junior college coach to come to Cal State Fullerton, you know, for Danny Sprinkle to do what he's, you know, leave his position and come to Cal State Fullerton and us inherit Anthony Santos and some of the other young men that we've been able to part of, be a part of their, their success track. I mean, Steve McClellan is a guy that we didn't really recruit. Mm -hmm. but he's now with the Atlanta Hawks as a coach, as a, as a workout guy, a development guy, as a video guy. I mean, and I get, I get super excited, not because he's working in the NBA, but because he's working mm -hmm. and he's doing something that he loves. And so those things are really, really um, important to me. And, and, and as you saw, and I don't know if you, you, you may have seen the video, um, you know, they played a video for us up at the end of the game. And, and it's funny, I didn't hear what was being said because the current team, you know, they were tackling me and, and hugging me. And, 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 and it was weird because the word love was thrown around quite a bit amongst that group. And that's what I get excited about because quite frankly, I mean, my surgery, it hasn't even been a year yet. Mm -hmm. But that was one of the words that was important to me during that time when I was laying on the bed, the hospital bed by myself, that word love came to me. And it's important that we exude the definition of love. And it came full circle in that huddle when those guys were saying it. And, and to me, that, that brought probably even more tears to my eyes, you know, as an emotional guy. I, I don't know that I am an emotional guy, but man, I cry at the drop of a dime. It's crazy. Um, but it was enjoyable. You know, it, it's also, it's, it's awesome when you can shed tears of joy because so much during the current time, we're shedding tears of sorrow because of COVID, because of the loss of life, because of the storms that hit Texas and my mom's family that's in Texas. And, you know, there's so much darkness around us, but these moments, as you said, we have to celebrate these moments because of those, 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 those moments of darkness, we have to celebrate the moments of, of light and happiness and love. Um, and, and I'm super proud of, of that part of it. Yeah. Listen, it's a, uh, it's a hell of an accomplishment. And I'm <laughs> curious because you obviously, you I mean, you're a smart guy. Did you know like you were going for win number 100 for the last couple of games? Like, was that a thing that was in the back of your mind at all? Um, it was in the back of my mind from at the, during the Hawaii, Hawaii, uh, Hawaii thing. And it was only on the, in my mind because someone sent it the screenshot, I guess they did of Iran and myself um, getting to a hundred wins. And so it was on my mind, but it took, you know, us so long for us to play. And we still, at that time, we needed two more wins, I think, to get to 100. And so it took us a long time to play and all kinds of things happened. So no, getting to 100 wins, that was the last thing on my mind. I was just trying to figure out how can we get a win for this group under the current circumstances with all hell breaking loose of not having two, your two point guards and they're hurt and Jalen Andrews is, is, you know, he's still hurt and you know, the current guys are that are on the roster. Josh is nursing an Achilles uh, injury and and Vince is coming back off of a concussion. And, and I don't know if he's concussed or I'm concussed or we're both concussed. I mean, it's all kind of hell breaking loose. And so we're just trying to make sense of it all. And I think it it came to some type of culmination on Saturday um, for the good. And, and obviously, you know, we're really excited about that.
So did you know once you guys got the win that that was number 100 or do you have to wait for the video to play? I had to wait for the video. And as, and, and anybody that saw the game, I mean, there were some things going on after the game um, that, that attracted my attention and they weren't positive. And so I was dealing with that and they weren't surrounding our team, had nothing to do with our team, it had nothing to do with San, uh, Cal State Fullerton people. Um, it had something to do with the, the other people that were there in the gym. Um, and so they wouldn't let us go off the floor. Uh, Jen uh, McGinn wouldn't let our team go off the floor. And so I'm, I walk across the floor to get a bottle of water and I'm thinking, okay, what now? What, what are we doing? You know, and lo and behold, out of, out of nowhere, I kind of, I hear my mom's voice and my sister's voice. And I'm like, what? And so I see everybody pointing to the video board and obviously my parents and my sister and my nephew are up there and my godmother up there and, and so on and so forth. And so again, I cried like a baby. That's awesome. I didn't see that video. I got to, I got to track that down. That's, yeah. that's amazing. I mean, it's something that you didn't, you didn't expect and to see family to bring those types of emotions. And then you went into the locker room and you were uh, flooded with water as, <laughs> as they decided to give you a, a, a water bath of sorts as you yeah. went in there. I guess as I tell my kids, I must have been stanking and they needed to wash me off a little bit, but it was awesome. It was a great time for, for those guys to, to, you know, celebrate, you know, and, and, and again, I want to give Jen credit and, and her staff and, and Sean and some of the other people that, that worked behind the scenes. Devin um, is a part of our marketing office and they work behind the scenes to, to create the videos, to work with our fam my family, to get the videos and all that stuff. So special shout out to them and thank you to them um, for doing that because you know me, I never would have, never would have did that for myself. I wouldn't even thought to do that. No, of course. And if they interviewed for it, you probably wouldn't have done it. You probably would have been like, no, I'm not interviewing for a number for my 100th win. Get out of here. I'm not That's doing that. <laughs> oh, man. But what does it mean to get the win against a team like UC Irvine that has been so good and been the staple of, I guess, um, success over the last couple of years in the conference? It, it's got to be something special because, I mean, we haven't even discussed it. Obviously, we've been recording for over 10 minutes. And you mentioned it like very briefly, but you guys were off for two weeks yeah. because of COVID again for the fourth time this season. <laughs> so to come back and play against a team like UC Irvine and get a win, it's got to be even more special that it came against a team like UCI. No, it was special from a sense standpoint of, you know, they are the standard. They are the standard of the big, of big West basketball. Everything right now goes through them. And for us to get that type of win um, beating our, our you know, the Orange County rival, the other school in Orange County, so to speak, um, the way that they play in terms of their physicalness and, and how hard they play. Um, and, and again, you know, you have to realize we're coming off of a COVID pause. Um, we're coming off of not having all of our guys. We're getting Vincent back. And, you know, because of the pause, uh, two guys didn't practice for 14 days. They got on the floor the day before the game and then they played. We also played, like I mentioned earlier, that game with, you know, our starting point guard and our other point guard, both of them in street clothes. And I'm looking around and I'm like, gosh, darn it. They dress like me. What, what, what they going to do, you know? Um, and, and so I think maybe before, I think the second game, I finally, I did realize, Hey, we playing this game without a point guard. What are we doing? You know? And, and again, it's, to me, it's the ultimate trust of your team. You know, the only thing that I asked them to do was play hard and play together. And I thought that second game, they did that and they did that for 40 minutes. And, and again, you know, when you play a team like UC Irvine, they make they bring that out of you. And if they if you don't do it, they're going to punish you. They're going to beat you by 30 if you don't do that. And so for our ball club to respond the way on the second night of back to back, it says even more about them and what they are and some of the numbers that they put up. I think a reporter told me that six guys played or I think seven guys played and only six guys did the scoring. Mm -hmm. Only six guys did the scoring. And I'm thinking, well, well, you want me to throw a couple buckets in? I mean, <laughs> how do we throw around here, you know, next, next we just do what we do. Um, so, so yeah, sure. It says a whole lot about our group um, and, and what they endured because I was not nice to them on Saturday morning. I was upset with them just simply because I didn't think their effort was in the right place. And, and you know, as a coach, you, 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 you demand their effort, obviously. Um, but then, you know, under the circumstances, you also have to take into account the fact that we're, coach, we are coming off of COVID. Yeah. 
you know, they haven't done, they haven't played a game since January 30th. So, so like cut them some slack, but of course I did it. I got out. No, no, Cause you strive for excellence. That's how you get to hundred wins, right? That, that yeah. you strive for excellence. And I mean, you guys fell behind by 11 with yeah. like 15, 30 to play and yeah. still came back. And it seems like, by the way, you guys played eight guys yeah. and six of the eight were the ones that scored and four yeah. of the six scored in double figures while the other two scored eight each yeah so uh yeah. basically yes it's six it's basically six guys yeah. carrying the load offensively for your team and four were in double figures so we, it, we needed all of that and, and we yeah. were down 11 points or 10 points and even at that point i still felt the belief and the trust in the huddle of our team because we did huddle we called a timeout i don't remember if it was a media timeout or we did but the belief that they shared amongst each other, the trust that they had for each other, because I didn't have to talk a lot. They were talking to each other about what needed to happen. And they went out and did it. And player led teams are, are, are significantly special because they're leading each other to accountable. They're not waiting for me to do it. They are leading each other to accountability. And that to me is, is the ultimate, um, sacrifice so to speak in 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 a team sport by the way you know how many fouls trey drew in that game i do not how many nine awesome get to the paint baby that's one of our things we get to the paint get to the paint spacing ball movement and get to the paint i I just again it goes back to the trust factor in terms of me to them i trust their skill set their talent i trust um, what they can do in space. And I said, hey, the only thing I'll ask you guys to do offensively is to space the floor, move the ball, and get to the paint at least two times per possession. If you do that, you will get a wide open shot, I promise you. And we started to believe that. And, and, and lo and behold, I mean, my man Johnny, Johnny came out of nowhere and shoots five for 10 Friday. And then Saturday, I, for, I don't know what he was, but- Three of six, two of four from deep. Yeah, I think he made the game-winning three. One of the game-winning threes um, are our baskets there t- towards the end. So, you know, again, it was an effort from everybody, and, and, and it was just an appreciation for, for their own skill set. They didn't do anything that I thought was out of their realm, so to speak, except play hard. Right. One Dr. Effort. Bradley, by the way, drew five fouls in yeah. 19 minutes. So I think that's what, they, that's what he's capable of. If he, if he ever decides to do it and do it hard, Boy, I'll tell you what, the sky's the limit. Like in practice, I tell our guys all the time, I said, if Dr. Bradley comes and sets something for you, like the way our practice, the way we practice, we go east and west. And Mount Baldy is just to the north. I throw the ball to, towards Mount Baldy. Hmm. And I promise you, <laughs> doctor will go and get it. He's that type of athlete. And I believe that. I believe that. And I think we saw a glimpse of that, a little bit of that on Friday and Saturday. So now you have played 12 conference games, which means you are at 13 total, but one of those was not against a D1 team. So you're at 12. So you need one more yeah. to uh, qualify. We've been talking about that number 13 for a while, and you have one series left at UCSD. Are you taking the weekend off? Um, we're trying to get some, get some playing time under our belt. And so we're, we're looking to uh, play this weekend if we can, if it makes sense, if it's healthy. Um, if we can, we will. If we're if if it doesn't make sense, then we won't uh, play anybody this weekend. So right now, we're we're looking at trying to take advantage of that situation. At home or on the road? Uh, preferably at home, but we will go on the road. We're we're not too bougie to to do that, just because we want to. You know, we want to play. You know, we're we're playing, but it uh, it has to make sense and it has to be safe. Local or is it going to be a bigger conference or are we allowed to discuss teams or you just want to talk about conferences and I don't, I would love to discuss teams with you, but I don't know who they are. I don't okay. know who they, you know, who, who it is. Um, it'd probably be local in terms of, you know, somewhere in Southern California, just if we have to drive, obviously we want to get there and get back. I don't think it'll be a flight trip unless they absolutely, you know, we, they make us something happens and Davis is available and then they make us go up and play Davis then that's a different story. But even that, I think getting on the plane right now from an administrative standpoint and from a uh, safety standpoint, I don't know that that's the best thing to do considering that we already are at 12 games and the 13th game will be our conference game. Um, so so right now everything is angled and geared towards, you know, uh, getting to that point 
uh, in Vegas at Mandalay. At, and I'm assuming D1 opponent is who you want to uh, schedule. Right now, we play anybody. Oh, okay, so you, you don't care. So the you, are the he, four, if they listening, call us. Yeah. Okay. He's there the you go. He'll he's play the, anybody. He, the the bat call is the bat signal has been out there. It's it, yeah. you if you want to play against Cal State Fullerton, Deidre Taylor, his phone line is open. And if you want to email us, Deidre Taylor Coaches Show at gmail.com. That's where our mailbag is, which is coming up shortly. Diedrich Taylor Coaches Show. Yeah. Gmail.com. Listen to the podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. It's there. And of course, also if you're watching on YouTube, that's awesome as well. Feel free to leave a comment. Um, we always like reading those and are much appreciated. So um UCSD, does that count? Does it not count towards a D1 opponent? What do we know what the deal is there? Um, what the deal is is it does count for division one, but it doesn't count in big West conference standings. Okay. So we will, you know, we're scheduled to play them and hopefully we can, we can, we can do that. Um, you know, to take advantage of that opportunity and, and, you know, we'll go into our league with 14 uh, division one games versus, versus 12. So, you know, we'll, hopefully we can get that done and, and have an opportunity to play them and, and kind of, kind of get back to I wouldn't say full strength because I don't think we'll ever be full strength I think Jalen Jalen probably is out um, for the, the remainder of the year just simply because he's in a boot um, I don't know what Jalen Andrews uh, he doesn't yeah he don't have an arm <laughs> <laughs> that's not a good thing it's not nice to say I love he you. doesn't have an arm <laughs> No, I was that's... watching uh, Black Panther earlier today yeah. you're talking yeah. about a guy that doesn't have an arm it's the, yeah. that dude that uh had that claw, whatever it was, and they yeah. all of a sudden his arms off. No doubt, and I think that's you know I I, I don't want to attribute it to that, but I think it's it's wise that you can say it has something to do with the fact that you know we we didn't have any training in the summer, mm -hmm. we didn't have any training in the fall, and so guys are literally breaking down at this point um, because of that, you know, because we didn't have time to to train them properly, we didn't have time to spend on the floor and kind of get those miles under our, under our belt, so to speak, and, and figure out, um, you know, who we can count on and, and, and how we can count on them, because obviously we, we want to count on everybody, um, but learning how we can count on them, I think is just as important as anything. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to the mailbag in a second, but there is something that I want to bring up. and I know you want to talk about as well. Sure. Um, and if you follow Cal State Fullerton's men's basketball team on Twitter. They tweeted out an article um, from Hoop Dirt. And what they discussed in that article is that there was a T-shirt that was worn by coaches and it listed all of the current African-American D1 head coaches on the back. And the T-shirts were designed by Cal State Fullerton head coach Diedrich Taylor. So this is going to be an episode where we – give appreciation to Deidre Taylor and he hates getting all the credit and uh, it's going to happen though. So I want you to tell me why you decided to do this and how it came about and anything else that you want to talk about with it. Um, really quick, I, it, how it came about is, is a long story, but the short of it is, is that when I was a youngster, um, I can vividly remember um, watching Big Monday um, at my house growing up. And so my mom would be in the kitchen. And so John Thompson would be on TV. And I can vividly remember the announcers talking about the game and talking about John coach Tom, John Thompson, but they never really spent a lot of time about the X's and O's. Mm -hmm. They talked more about his mentorship for the guys in his program and his leadership for the guys in the program. And I've always been attracted to that. Um, and I remember that. And so how it happened, how the shirts happened. I was just literally sitting downstairs, just kind of screwing around. And, and, I, and, and, and the thought came to me um, to honor the past guys like John Thompson, guys like John Chaney, guys like George Raveling, guys like Will Robinson, um, who's the first, first black African-American head coach ever at Illinois state. Um, to honor those guys, because I'm not here if it's not for them. Mm -hmm. If it's not for the sacrifices that they made, it's not for the, the you know, John Chaney, Coach Chaney taking his team off the floor and, and the message behind that and Coach Thompson doing the same thing um, behind the SAT and, and some of the other things that were going on at that time. Um, but their radical behavior always caught my attention. 
coupled with obviously who my dad is in my world and, and, and those things. And so I wanted to honor them. And so we put a quote on the front of the shirt and I called Coach Santos and I started to tell him what, what I thought we should do. And, and so we kicked around some ideas and that's what we came up with. Putting a, their quote on the front of the shirt and on the back of the shirt, which, which <laughs> I'm most proud of is the fact that every black head coach in America right now, Division One, their name is represented on that shirt. And, and what gives me great pleasure is the text messages of just a little simple shirt, but it's encouragement. And it's a conversation piece to talk about what we're going to do moving forward and the responsibility that, that comes along with that moving forward and, and relating that responsibility back to Coach Smith and Coach, or, uh, yeah, Coach uh, Smith, uh, Cheney and Coach Thompson and Coach Raveling and, and some of the other guys um, that we stand on the shoulders of. And, and so that is important to me, so much so to where I've had two coaches say that they're gonna wear their shirts, Coach Jordan um, at Butler and, um, Coach Mike Boyton at Oklahoma State, they both said that they were going to wear their shirts. Um, so I sit down to have dinner tonight and turn on the game. Oklahoma State's playing Texas Tech and Coach Boyton has a shirt on, you know, and, and, and Laval sent me a text and said he was wearing his shirt. And, and I didn't know that they were playing the next time or their next game, Butler versus Georgetown, of all people. And so that to me was special. Um, but again, it's not about me. It's, it's the conversation that, that the recognition of those t-shirts, the conversation associated with it, what can we do to promote black head coaches? Because as we look on the floor, they're black players that are represented, but the coaches are, are the head coaches of those programs are, are, are represented disproportionately. They're, they're not represented. And I think, um, if you give them the opportunity and if you give them the right opportunity, they're guaranteed to have a great deal of success. And that's the point that we want to make, you know, you know, what Colin Kaepernick did in terms of just kneeling down, bringing light to an issue and how people respond. You know, what he did, obviously, it was polarizing, but nonetheless, people are talking about what, what, what happened. And so we don't want to compare ourselves to, to Colin and his cause because we're, we're not worthy of that. But the conversation I think that can be had behind the t-shirts is, is more what I'm excited about. Well, it takes a collective effort. It, it can't just be one person doing it. You have to have other people that are fighting for the cause and that's exactly what you're doing. And so the shirts, if this article is correct, three different versions yeah. uh, with a different quote on the yeah. front of each. Yep. Uh, why did you decide to do three different versions as opposed to just one? Um, I did three different versions because there's three home games or three games uh, in the month of February, February, Black History Month. And so um, we did three shirts thinking that we were going to wear them, you know, once every uh, every weekend. But but we didn't play two of the weekend. So we were kind of that kind of got screwed up a little bit. Um, but it was it was also fascinating because. John Smith is in our league and we were going to play him. And so we had his shirt and going to hand deliver it. And both of us, I think would have worn it for one of those games. And that would have been special. Um, just, just to see two guys that come from the same cloth, so to speak, um, sharing in that experience, that, that would have been a special, but um, it didn't, you know, COVID had other plans for us. And so we, we had to adjust. And that's why we have three shirts is just simply because the, 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 playing schedule permitted us to to do that and so um I said I wasn't going to do this and I I, I I don't I don't know um we are going to sell those shirts I was gonna ask <laughs> we're gonna sell those shirts so if anybody wants the shirts they can hit us up um on uh the email or they can contact us directly however they can get a hold of us but we'll we'll uh, We'll order the shirts for you and send them out and, and do all that stuff. And super thankful to, to Coach Santos. Like he doesn't get enough credit. And people laugh at me when I say, literally, I can't breathe without this dude. Like I can't and I won't. And Coach Zui is getting there. He's getting there. Like I told him probably two months ago. I think I said this on the, on the podcast. Like literally, he walked out of practice, wasn't in practice for like 20 minutes. I said, hey, man, come here. Don't do that again. When I don't, when I don't see you then I get nervous. Like, I don't get nervous, you know, when my players are not there. When I don't see Zooey, hey, something's wrong. 
there's something wrong let's let's have a conversation let's let's make sure that i can visibly see you i need to touch you and it, it's crazy man like I, that's just how i am that's just just how i am but like when i don't see those two guys mm -hmm. I, I'm, so I'm on edge i know something's wrong well, and, and Santos was the director of basketball operations yeah. way, way back when I was uh, broadcasting news for Cal State Fullerton. So he, he worked his way up from director of basketball operations to yeah. assistant coach. And then obviously now that's where he is. So he, he's worked his way up. And now Zooey, expert producer uh, behind the scenes of this show. He's now he, everything. Yeah, now he's the guy that's doing everything. So I think I gave the email earlier. And I think I said Deidre Taylor Coaches Show. It's actually D Taylor Coaches Show. Yeah. at gmail.com that's d taylor coaches show at gmail.com so reach out um you can also probably reach out there too if you want to yeah. uh, buy the shirt yeah. and we can uh figure that one uh out so but one more thing on the shirt who had the job of trying to uh get every single name from uh, every school uh you know it was really it was it was really easy because of of what has happened in in, in the unity that that it's created um, all of the black head coaches uh, get on a phone call, a Zoom call once a month. Oh, cool. Obviously it varies now, but I think before the season, it was, it was a, we almost had and all of us, I think, oh, were on the call. And so with that, they've created a database. And so because they created that database, I was able to get that information to Anthony. Now he had the task of getting the sizes from every coach and then the address and mailing it out. And that was a process. I probably didn't oh, see it for three or four days just because I could, I could, I saw nothing but vanilla, uh, manila envelopes in his office. He was in there somewhere, but I saw these envelopes and that's just a part of the work that needs to be done, baby. Oh man. That was, uh, must've been a pain in the rear end yeah. trying to get them to actually respond to you and yeah. get the sizes. I'm sure he was coordinating with a uh, basketball operations guys and not anybody on the actual staff. Cause they yeah. just, no, no, respond. No, yeah. no, not going to happen. All right. Let's open the mailbag, huh? Yeah, let's get to it. D Taylor coaches show at gmail.com. Let's start with Patrick. Dear coach Taylor, is there anything you had to do different either with the team or personal life because of COVID that you felt like was a positive and will continue again post COVID? Um, I, I mean, I think, I think some of the zoom calls during the off season were something that we're going to carry forward. Obviously, we're going to carry forward also the fact that we're not going to do a lot of them and not don't do it long. But I think the Zoom calls during the off season and it, it allowed us to, to get familiar with each other, each other at a different level. You know, we kind of got past the surface. Hey, how are you? You know, all that stuff and kind of got got a little deeper, not 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 a whole lot deeper. But but we got a chance to know each other and learn each other because obviously there was nothing else to do. We weren't playing anytime soon, but. Um, getting a chance to know each other and, and developing those relationships and those bonds, I think are super important. It's something that we're going to try to carry forward um, with our program. Anything in your personal life that you've had to do that you think you would stick with? No, because I, I, I'm not off the top of my head because everything that I get to do that I enjoy, it constitutes other people. Yeah. And that's the one thing that COVID has not allowed us to do is be around other people. Yeah. I like being around other people. I like their energy sometimes, you know, I, I, I appreciate that part of it. And, and so um, I don't know that I would do anything different personally other than, you know, my golf game. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> oh God. Well, One, that got better. Yeah. See, it's because your practice makes uh, somewhat perfect or not yeah. perfect at all, but it's yeah. fine. Um, Jeffrey Bem has a question mm. about recruiting and commitment. So I'm not sure how much you're actually able to answer, sure. uh, but we'll get into it. Hi coach. My question is about recruiting for next year. I know we have a commitment from Tevin Smith. We need bigs. Are you close to commitments from bigs? Is your preference transfers or freshmen? Always good to listen to the show. Appreciate it, Jeff. Um, I don't know that I can necessarily say what our preference is. Um, I can, I'll just, be safe and say that we're looking for a high character, high energy guys that can rebound. Um, right now, I think the emphasis on, is on size. We need it bad. Um, but before we get to all of that, you know, guys, we want good people. We want good people that, that understand work ethic and, and are willing to work and, and willing to put the team first. Those things are important to us um, and things that, that have to um, kind of be present 
with the individual that we're recruiting. And that's, that's, I don't know if I said too much or not saying enough, but that's, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. I don't think you said too much because I don't think you really gave anything away there. Uh, and you, you and I have talked about this before. The second part of the question is your preference transfers or freshmen. You said that uh, the last couple of years have kind of told you that you, you like having transfers in your program. Yeah. You like having those guys that have already gone through the first couple of years somewhere else and that can bring experience to a program and kind of the win now mentality. So yeah. I, I think you you're happy with the blend of both transfers and also a couple of incoming freshmen yeah you said it you said it best blend let's let's get a blend because i think also you know the two freshmen that we have i think the one that's currently on the roster you know he's arguably top five amongst all of the other freshmen in the big west and again i think that's our third he would be our he's in contention to be our third big west freshman of the year and so that to me says a lot about our staff and terms of recruiting guys that are good enough to be big West freshman of the year. That says a lot about who they are and what they're looking for and the ability to be able to attract it here at Cal state Fullerton. Um, I, I, you can't, you can't shake a stick at that. And you're obviously talking about Dante, um, Dante Maddox, who Richie Schuler earlier today actually tweeted out yeah. that uh, Dante is in the running right now for big West um, freshman of the year. So yeah. he, getting some recognition there from the, uh, Analyst for ESPN that has had many of uh, visits to uh, Titan Gym. So if Richie's watching, shout out to you, my friend. No doubt. Um, the third and final person, Tim Vincent. Nice. He says, congratulations on your 100th win. Even better to do it against Irvine. Here's a couple questions. If you haven't already answered during the podcast, he said, I noticed you only played with eight guys on both Friday and Saturday. When do you get the other guys back? Will you have a full team for the Big West tournament? We kind of touched on that, but you're going to probably have eight going forward. Or do you have to anticipate some guys coming back? Uh, it's it's hard. It's tough to say. You know, we want guys, and I think we're close to getting those guys back, and, and obviously we'd love to have them. Um, but moving forward, it, it's really a wait and see, you know, how, how well they respond, you know, how well Charlie responds, how well Jalen responds over the next couple, three, four days in terms of getting them back on the floor and move and having them. Um, for the last two games at UC San Diego and then, you know, going into the tournament, the more bodies you can have in the tournament, the better, just simply because of the format. You know, you Tuesday you play and then Wednesday you have off and then you play Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And so the more bodies, obviously, it, it, it behooves you to have them because it betters your chance to win those games when you have, you know, have some depth. Um, and, and I do believe that conditioning will play a big part in the championship winner across all of the tournaments because they're, you know, you don't like you look at our league, for instance, like we've played 12 games and Davis, I think has played nine or 10 games, but in conference, they've, they're three and three, mm -hmm. but their winning percentage is better than ours. So they're a higher seed than us, mm -hmm. you know? And so it, it, you have to weigh those things. And I think that's the best way to probably do it. Um, but you know, you have to weigh all that in, into into context and, and put it in context. But but you know, it's it's, it's tournament time, and, and the best thing about the Big West is the tournament. Mm -hmm. Getting to the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and trying to figure out who's going to win back to back to back. And so that's you know that's that's what we're looking forward to. And they just announced today, no fans will be at the uh, tournament in Las Vegas. So just out of the abundance of caution. The other two questions we hit on, he said, uh, with an opening next weekend, is there a chance you schedule a couple of games? So, yeah, it's absolutely a possibility. Definitely. Um, and then number three, I read some more of the UCSD games don't count in the conference standings. Is that true? The answer is yes. And he said, why? I don't think we know why, do we? I don't know why. Um, they try to explain it, um, but I don't, I don't have a great, Fair enough. <laughs> I don't, I don't have a great understanding of, of why. You were too angry that they didn't work kind of that you said, you know what? I don't care. I don't want to hear it. It's stupid. And I don't want to hear it because there's another team. There's another team that's going to division two, division one, somewhere on the East coast. And that team is winning. They're winning their conference. Well, so now what do you do? And they count, they, those, those wins and losses, they count. So how do you pick one team that counts? And then you say, this team doesn't count. So it doesn't, it doesn't, the inconsistency is unbelievable. Yeah, that's weird. I don't understand why that's the case. But either way, as he says, thanks, Coach Diedrich. And to you, Tim Vincent, we say thank you. So a good mailbag um, that hit on a bunch of different things there. And now we just got to finish the season, you know? Yeah. 
possibly get some games in this weekend and then the following weekend UCSD and then it's uh it's Vegas and we'll uh we'll touch on Vegas either next episode the one after we'll, we'll talk about what's going on there and the safety protocols and what needs to be done um just a little preview um testing will need to be done going into that week I, I believe that it's three tests that yeah. have to be done before the team takes off to Vegas and then there's testing I believe every day yeah. in Vegas is what they're gonna be doing and then NCAA tournament they're testing I think what they're doing um and I'm not sure if you knew if you know this or if you can confirm this but I believe they need seven straight days of negative tests yep. um before you head to for you guys Indianapolis uh, yeah. for the women at San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah. You do need those ne- negative seven negative tests. And then they're also uh, taking you right from your conference tournament. So on Saturday night, when you get up Sunday, you're going right to Indianapolis for the men in San Antonio for the women. Um, but they're taking the conference winner right from the conference and going right to the, uh, the, the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm trying to figure yeah. out how, that, how that's going to work for on my end if uh, if you if you see Irvine ends up going to the uh, NCAA tournament because I ain't driving all the way to Irvine to test every single day. That ain't happening uh, yeah, that from would, where I live. Yeah, that would that would not be easy. <laughs> that would not be fun, especially uh, traffic. Yeah, for sure. Well, another good one, another good one, and we end this by saying, "Congrats, Mister 100. It's a hell of an accomplishment. You should be proud of where you are." you've had some ups you've had some downs and boy this year you've had some major downs um and to go from being in the hospital bed to (laughs) not knowing if you were going to make it to now being at the point where you made it and you got through the season and you got to win number 100 and you were able to see win number 100 that's awesome man that's awesome yeah no, we appreciate it. We definitely appreciate it, you know, and 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 we couldn't appreciate it if we hadn't gone through those, some of those things, you know, some of the low lights. And so super excited and anxious for what's to come, the future, you know, the hope that things are going to get better and be better and be more consistent. So we're working our butt off to uh, to make that happen. So we're we're excited and hopefully we can bring you along as well. And we end this on a high note. So for Deidre Taylor, the head coach of Cal State Fullerton, I'm Brandon Marcus saying, So long, and we will talk to you next time. Sounds good. See you.